Is hell freezing over? I'm starting to think that hell is freezing over. <laughs> I'm starting to believe that miracles really do happen. Because tell me how the fuck. I'm Team on a Mac this episode. Tell me how in the world I'm agreeing with the Anna Mac. Somebody please tell me. <laughs> Well, listen, you better believe we're going to talk about it. Okay, welcome back to Damien After Dark. If you're new here or you haven't subscribed yet, you know what to do. Click that subscribe button. Also, like this video if you don't mind. Y'all know how important that is to me with you liking this video. That helps me get into the YouTube algorithm. YouTube's going to share the video out so more baddies fans like yourself can find us. And we can grow our family over here, okay? Um, join the conversation. I want to hear your thoughts and opinions on this episode. It was a lackluster episode. I'm not going to lie. It was a little dull. You know, um, it didn't really get uh, climatic or entertaining until the end. But um, we're going to talk about the episode as we always do. So get in the comments. Let me know what you think. Uh, last but not least, if you want to join the Damien After Dark movement and donate to the channel and help us grow and sustain this podcast, because this is my little part-time job now, in the description box below will be some ways that you can donate. And I love you guys so much who like my videos, subscribe, watch, even those that are watching and not commenting. I see you. I see you. I have people come in here all the time like, I don't comment much, but I just wanted to say this. Or So, I love you guys, okay? I call you guys my watchtower watchers. Y'all are watching from the watchtower, and that's okay. Look at this necklace I got this weekend. I wanted to show you guys. I got it for my dog, Cooper. Y'all seen Cooper. I've brought him up here before, but he's camera shy. He don't like, He don't. he's not like his daddy. He don't like being on the camera. But it's a little pride necklace, and it was on sale at the pet store for like $4. And I was like, this is so fucking cute. Uh, I would never wear something like this because I'm not a big color person. I like neutrals. But I thought for him it was so cute. And I can actually double it up as a bracelet. Like, it would actually fit as a bracelet, like, perfectly. I just thought that was so cute. Um, anyway, let's get into the episode, okay? Now, the, like I said, the episodes are starting to to get a little lackluster we're losing momentum to be honest this episode this episode could have been the finale we don't need 20 episodes zeus 12 to 15 are more than enough okay um now we see biggie and anna talk about the party lemon pepper's party what went down at lemon pepper's party they talk about how et showed up to the party and they mentioned that taseki and et the conversation that they had we know that taseki and et moved past their differences they talked about their issues they squashed it and they moved on but Anna and Biggie aren't really feeling it. They don't really like the fact that they squashed it and they and and they moved on. They didn't really care for that. But my thing is, because Anna and Biggie are saying like, oh, they're besties now. But I, I didn't take it as that. I took it as two women squashing their issues and moving on. So there's no animosity. And so that they could be cordial in a room. I didn't take it that they were BFFs. It's giving insecure friendship vibes. I don't like that when people do that, when friends do that. Like, I, I don't know. Y'all need to stop worrying about who's friends with who. And just worry about keeping your own friendships together, right? Now, Anna talks about Mariah. And she says, you know, she never had any ill will towards Mariah. She never had malicious intentions. And she says that, um, if anything, she was hurt. Uh, Anna says, I was never mad at Mariah. I was genuinely hurt. And I believe that. I believe that. Like, I, it feels genuine coming from Anna that she didn't want to get this low with Mariah, right? Um, and why I really believe it is that Anna says she's going to apologize to Mariah, which to me is huge. I'm like, are we seeing growth from Anna Mac, once known as Anna Wack? But listen, as long as I see some growth in Anna Mac, I respect it. And I will call you by your name, Anna Mac. Um, but no, I feel like Anna Mac has shown a lot of growth from last season to this season specifically. Because we've seen her come in. She did all that shit with Roly, but then she was the bigger woman and she approached Roly and she apologized. Now she's apologizing to Mariah. And I ain't got nothing bad to say about that. Like, if you can swallow your pride 
and put this baddie persona behind you for a minute and be like, look, we, we're both human. I hurt you. I'm sorry. Like, can we move past it? I respect that. I respect that. And that's the kind of people I want to be around. People that can fuck up, but yet make a mis- make a mistake and say, I'm sorry. I fucked up, you know? Um, And listen, let me just be clear. I still don't like Anna, okay? I don't like Anna. But it's almost like, I'm going to tell y'all what it's like. It's almost like, you know, when your brother or your sister, like your sibling or your parent, or your best friend starts dating somebody that you don't fucking like, but you know, like, you have to put up with them, or they're gonna ice you out, in a way, that's kind of how I feel, like, I feel like I'm dating Zeus, or I'm not dating Zeus, I'm sorry, I feel like, you know, Zeus is the family member, the friend, the brother, the sister, and they're dating on a Mac, we don't fucking like them, but we gotta deal with them, in this case, it's Lemmy, dating on a mac allegedly we just gotta fucking put up with it she's here she ain't going nowhere as long as she keeps swallowing that load and allegedly she's gonna be around so it is what it is um so we see a scene with asian doll mariah and sapphire and asian doll tells them tells mariah and sapphire that at lemon pepper's birthday party when bianca showed up bianca was on on fight time bianca wanted to fight asian doll says that she um that bianca said that she came there to fight um now i feel like bianca looked stupid showing up to this party but again i think she was coached too do i think that in real life bianca would have showed up to this party wanting to fight no i feel like bianca quit the show episodes went by zeus called her look bianca we need some content for an episode we need some drama. Will you show up to Lemon, Lemon Pepper's party? We'll fly you out. We'll give you $5,000. You know, just show up and start some shit. Fight somebody, right? That's what I feel like Bianca did. Um, And to be honest with y'all, Bianca to me could have been everything that Diamond the Body is becoming. Okay? Diamond the Body has really done a good job with navigating this show and how she she plays her card because it, it's a game y'all reality tv it's all a game and it's how you play your cards right it's how you 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 know get your name out there you're it's all about branding yourself becoming this business and diamond the body has done that she's out there she's hosting appearances every fucking night and here's the thing why i compare diamond the body and bianca it's because they both came from now that's tv right they both have this similar situation this similar past both of these are now that's tv now that's tv girls but i feel like one of them has really capitalized off of their time versus the other um now i'm not shading bianca i feel like bianca's done a good job as far as you know she's out here working too but diamond is looking like the bigger star in my eyes she's getting the more camera time she's she's getting she looks better as far as you know the how the edit goes um I feel like if you, if coming out of this show, if you have, if you ask anybody who is Diamond the Body and you ask who is Bianca, they're going to remember Diamond the Body more. I feel like Bianca just kind of dropped the ball. Um, now, Scotty says that her and Roly, this, they were talking about tonight how, I want to hear y'all's opinions on this. She's, Scotty says that her and Roly and Natalie are the originals. They're the OG originals. And, I don't know how I feel about that because I know that Natalie's an original, but I don't feel like Scotty and Roly are. I get it. They came on Batty South and they've been on every episode since. They're huge. But an OG starts from the beginning. An OG starts from the start, the very, very beginning. You know what I'm saying? Do y'all feel like they're OGs? Some people do because they say, oh, they don't feel like this show really started until Batty South. But not me. I actually liked baddies atl i mean i know it wasn't the best but i didn't mind it i like the girls that were on there because they were og bad girls and let's not forget where this show comes from it's a spinoff of the bad girls club in a way right um and also in that scene with scotty natalie and roly did anybody notice natalie had a strong mustache coming in <laughs> and listen i'm not shading we're human we all grow hair right but that was a strong five o'clock shadow coming through uh now the girls talk about et et gets brought up and they talk about how they had to change their phone numbers because of et 
and they say that it was so childish that she did that, um, which I don't really get because E.T., you're, you've been on this show. You understand the magnitude of leaking somebody's phone number, what that could do, right? Like, I don't understand why she did it with her being on TV and having all these crazy baddies fans potentially come after you. Um, so, yeah, we see E.T. come in the episode later. We see E.T. versus Roly. That happens later. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, now, Scotty asks... Natalie, if E.T. and Bianca are just there for the party or if they're going to be around. And Natalie says, you know, that they're staying for dinner. And we all know what that means. You know, they're not staying for dinner for nothing. But my thing is, we didn't see them tonight. Did y'all notice that at the dinner? We didn't see E.T. or Bianca. So that just makes me wonder, like, are they coming in next week? Are they going to be a surprise? I don't know. We didn't see him in the sneak peek for next week. Did y'all see them in the sneak peek for next week? I didn't see Bianca or or um, E.T. Now we see this sit down with Mariah and Anna, right? Anna wants to apologize to Mariah about what happened. We see Anna starts to cry over this situation with her and Mariah. And I'm like, wow, this situation really affected her. Um, it seemed like Mariah was trying to get emotional at one point. It did seem like Mariah was trying to force a tear a little bit just because Anna was crying. But I digress. Um, but I'm like, damn, these girls must really have a real friendship. Is this real? Or is this acting? But then again, I'm like, if it were acting, these girls couldn't act to save their life. Like, it comes off real to me. I really think it is. Like, I don't think that they're that good of actors. And I'm going to tell y'all what I see. To honestly, what I, what I think it is, I think that these two girls got really close last season. I think these two girls got really close filming last season. And then some shit happened. And then, you know, the water got muddy. And it it popped off. And to be honest, Mariah's mom should have never even been there in the first place. Especially if she's messy like they say she is. They say Mariah's mom's always into bullshit. She should have never even been there. And this, this would have never occurred. Um, but it is refreshing. It is refreshing to see some resolution on this show for once. Like, I know we watch for the drama. I know we watch for the fights. But... It's always combative, always. So to see somebody let their walls down, let their guard down, be vulnerable and say, look, bitch, I'm sorry. We crying. Like, you know, what I mean? that's real life. That's real life. Um, I appreciate that they can put that baddies persona aside and just be real. I want to see the real life emotions. You know what I mean? The real life shit. Now, the girls are getting ready to go out to dinner. As I'm watching, I'm like, let's see if we'll actually see any food on the table this episode. Let's see if we actually see a fork go to the mouth. Because, you know, they're notorious for putting these girls in a restaurant to fight and not feeding them. Allegedly. I mean, we see it. And I'm going to say allegedly. Um, the replacements are showing up to dinner. E.T. and Bianca are allegedly showing up to dinner. I'm like, damn, it's going to be 30 people at this damn dinner. Um, now, <sighs> oh, child, somebody please help Pork Chop. Somebody please help Pork Chop. Ooh, child, because that storm wig she had, you know that just that wig she had on like storm from X Men, that gray wig. And then she got this pink pajama set looking thing on, like y'all are not going out to dinner. She looked like she was running to the fucking corner store. She looked like she just got banged out the night before and she's heading home from a raw dog. Thank you, ma'am, wham bam. Like that's what it was giving me. It was not giving I'm going out to dinner. Like, girl, I and some people are like, well, that's just meatball. That's just meatball. Like, no, that's just tacky. Like, be presentable. Come on, girl. Come on. You're on television. You're going out to dinner. You know, we're going out. to. And to be honest, if I'm going out with a group of people, 
I don't want us to all look good and we got a scrub in the mix. You know, we all looking our best. We all smelling our best. We all hyping each other up. Girl, you look good. You look good. You look good. Yes, girl. And then you got old pork chop scrub over here. Looking like she stank. Looking like you don't have the means to do something. Now, I get it. Look, y'all. I don't want y'all to get this twisted. I'm not saying pork chop has to be. A girly girl, glitzy, big hair, heels, jewelry. No, I get that's not realistic. Everybody's not like that. But at least look a little bit presentable. You know, she could have put on a cute tracksuit or something. She could have threw a cute tracksuit on, some J's, a cute wig, and called it a day. Missy Elliott's a good example of somebody, you know, who doesn't like the girly aesthetic, but she still look cute. The brat. Right? Like you can be masculine, you can be a tomboy, you can be whatever and look presentable and look cute and not look like you just woke up and rolled out of the bed. Take a bella, where, where you at? Come get your come get your family. Get your sister, your cousin, whoever she is to you. Cause Tinka Bella look good as fuck. I, I like I like what, what Tink had on in the Sprinter van going to dinner. Same for Sapphire. I like her little look too. That was a lot of the girls look cute, but some of them not so not so much now before they all get to the restaurant natalie has orchestrated a sit down between roly and et at the restaurant she's got them in a separate room she wants them to sit down and hash out any of their issues before they get to dinner i imagine et doesn't get to show up to dinner after this fight with roly that we saw maybe that's why we didn't see et i don't know but um So E.T. walks in. We see E.T. walk in with these Gucci shades on. Keep in mind, it's nighttime in the Dominican Republic. Okay, it's nighttime. And here go E.T. with these big Gucci shades on. I mean, <laughs> Lord have mercy. Then Roly gonna eat her up in the confessionals with how she looked. Roly ate her up. Talking about her rainbow two-piece. This, this cheap wig that she got for free for doing promo on Instagram. And then the big fake Gucci shades. Oh. I'm sorry, E.T., but those Gucci shades, like what you were what you were trying to give was not given what it was supposed to give. I ain't never landing that interview with E.T. if she see this. But I'm sorry, I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna keep it hundred percent real. They sit down. You know, Natalie brings up the leaking of her phone number. She can't get past that E.T. leaked her phone number because Natalie says that she had that phone number for years. And I listen, I understand. And anybody that's had a phone number for a long time, they understand, right? I had a phone number for 17 years. 17 years. I had a number that I had gotten in 2007 that I had to give up. I think it was 2007, somewhere around there. Um, I had to give up because when I swapped my phones over, my carrier wouldn't transfer the number, and I was so devastated. I'm like, oh, my God, I've had this number for so long. Um, so I, I get Natalie's frustration with that one. Like, it is frustrating because then it's like everybody that knows your number by heart, that has had your number forever, like, you got your number and, you know, on all these different bills, you know, different people have your phone number, the doctor's office, all that good stuff, and then you got to change it. Um, now Natalie says in her confessional, which I thought was interesting in Natalie's confessional, she says she hates E.T. She said she hates E.T. and that she cannot stand her. And I'm like, ooh, I don't think E.T.'s future on this show looks bright. I don't think she'll ever be back after this season. I think they gave her this little cameo to tie the story up just, you know, to give us something else. And I think after this season, I don't think we'll ever see her again. I don't think she'll, that we'll ever see her on Now That's TV either. Does Now That's TV bring their talent back when they go to Zeus? When you trade? Um. Now, they get to talking about the, what really happened, right? What, what, like, what, what's the problem? Why did E.T. run up on Natalie? Right? We've, all, we've talked about that in the past. But E.T. says that Natalie called her. When she was in a vulnerable spot. And she says she thought that Natalie understood what was going on. 
And I'm like, that doesn't really give a lot of context as to why you're upset. What, you vented to Natalie and what? Like, I'm I'm confused. Because it feels like E.T. expected more from Natalie than what she was given. Like, what did you want her to do? Give you a $100,000 check? Put you on baddie season 6, 7, 8, 9, 10? Buy you a house? Like, I, I don't know. Now, Natalie says, she tells E.T., you know, she's open to an apology. She's like, you know, I want to know like what we're what we're sitting down and talking for. I don't have any animosity towards you anymore, but if anything, I would like an apology because you, um, I never done anything to you, right? Natalie says, I I feel like I never did anything to you. And again, Et never specified what Natalie did to her. Like it's all this bullshit and this fluff. It's all about her feelings and what she feels. Like, no, let's stick to the facts. What did Natalie do to you? Unless they edited out what, what E.T. said. Because it did feel like a little bit of an edited moment right there. But I don't know. I don't know. The only thing I can think of that Natalie did to E.T. Like, the only thing I can think of. And we talked about this last uh, last season. Um, is Natalie distancing herself, right? Because here's the thing. I don't think people realize this. When Baddies East was casting, Natalie who should, uh, Natalie's saying, who should we bring on the show? Who should we bring on the show? Everybody was in the comments tagging E.T. We want Scarface. We want E.T. We want E.T. We want Scarface, right? So Scarface came. She went from being on this high of everybody wanting her. Natalie Natalie probably boosted her head up. Oh, Scarface, everybody's tagging you in the comments. Everybody wants you. You're about to be the biggest star on Zeus. You're, you know, I can already hear Natalie doing that to her. I think that's what happened. They boosted her up, boosted her up, boosted her up, brought her on to Baddies East. Her performance was terrible. The fans did not like her. We did not want to see her anymore, and Natalie turned on her. Natalie went from, oh, girl, you're going to be the biggest star to not picking those calls up anymore. I think that's what happened. Um, now, E.T. does apologize to her. But my thing is, sis, if you're, if you're going to apologize, E.T., first of all, take your sunglasses off, right? I'm not going to take you serious if I can't look you in the eye. Take your fucking sunglasses off and look, look at me woman to woman and apologize to me if you really mean it. But that's the thing. I don't think she even really meant it. I'm going to be real with y'all. I don't think she even really meant it. Now, E.T. says she feels like Nat. She apologizes, and then she says she feels like, um, no, I'm sorry. E.T. apologizes, and then in Natalie's confessional, Natalie says that E.T. feels like Natalie set her up. And I'm just like, I mean, probably it's Natalie Nunn. She probably did set her up. But, I mean, this is what comes to the fucking territory, I guess. But I need specifics. I want specifics. How did Natalie set you up? If anything, she gave you a fucking opportunity. She set you up for fucking to get a fat check. What do you mean she set you up? She gave you a chance. And this is what I get. This is what I be. Now I be seeing what Natalie be saying. Because Natalie, you know, she's like, I give these girls opportunities and they turn on me. And I kind of can see it. Because I'm like, what are the specifics? How does she turn on you? At the reunion? I don't know. It just feels like E.T.'s playing the victim a bit. Like, it doesn't seem like a lot of accountability. In my opinion, if that was me, I would have come in there with my tail tucked between my legs. I would have been a very apologetic. I'm so sorry for what happened. Anything they would have said to me, I would have said, you're right. I'm so sorry. You know, I would have gave them what they wanted because E.T.'s goal, let's be real, her goal is to get back on the show. That's why she's there, to get that paycheck and to get back on the show because she feels stupid for making the moves that she made last year. She, she you know... And to be honest, I feel like that's the only reason she's apologizing. She wants back on the show. I mean, think about it. You did all last season with these girls, and then you have to come back for an episode and watch these same girls. They're having fun. They're making this money. They're traveling to all these different islands, and you could have been there, but you're missing out on it. I'd be salty and mad too, right? I'd be salty and mad too because E.T. could have easily made fifty to a hundred thousand dollars to do this show. 
fifty to a hundred thousand dollars is what she probably would have got paid to go to the Caribbean for three weeks, two weeks, however long it is. Now I thought it was a little sus in Natalie's confessional. She says that she's not gonna hit ET, but Roly, do your big one, and I'm like, was this planned? Did you and Roly plan this, Natalie? Was this a setup? Now, Roly confronts E.T. about her issues. We see Natalie talk to Roly about her issues. Now we're seeing Roly... I mean, we saw Natalie confront E.T. with her issues. Now we're seeing Roly confront E.T. And um, Roly says, you know, you've been doing all these interviews, talking shit. And y'all know we've talked about some of those same interviews here on the channel. You know, um, back when back when E.T. did these interviews. Now, E.T. is backpedaling. When Rolly's bringing it up, uh, no, well, I, 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 well, I, I mean, I mean, I, no, no, uh, et, it's clear, it's day, it's, it's on Instagram still, it's still on YouTube. You can find the interviews that you did. You said it. You was like, I mean, even Rolly brought up when the interview said the interviewer asked, "Are you and Rolly still friends?" And you went. We saw Rolly bring that up. I remember that interview. And then you want to backpedal and act like you didn't say what you said. and But then she kind of, um, the part that really threw me off was when E.T. says she leaked, ro it blew my mind because E.T. said, I leaked your phone number because you wouldn't answer my phone calls. That blew me, y'all. That blew me right there. I was like, oh, hell no. Nah. E.T. is one of those friends that feels entitled to your friendship. E.T. is one of those friends that anytime she calls or texts, you better answer right then. And if you don't, she's mad at you. Uh, uh I don't play those kind of friendships. And Roly was stunned herself. She was like, you're fucking weird, bro. You're childish. And Roly is so right. Like, she said this was kid shit, and I agree. It's so childish that you got upset that Rosie was not answering your phone calls. Is she your woman? Is that your girlfriend? Are y'all eating each other's pussy? Why are you so pressed that she wouldn't answer your phone calls? Listen. I am not entitled to answer anybody's phone call. I don't care who the fuck you are. And that is something that I think people need to realize. Like, you are allowed to have boundaries. And just because someone doesn't answer a phone call or just because someone tells you no, it's not personal. Y'all have to understand that. If somebody doesn't want to talk on the phone, if somebody doesn't answer their text messages, or if you ask somebody for some money or something and they say no... Don't take it fucking personal. I can't stand that. I do not like high maintenance friendships. I do not like high maintenance friendships. Now, Roly walks off. And she's cussing E.T. out. They're going back and forth. And Roly chunks her purse at E.T. And baby, they just start going at it. Bop, 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 right? They start going at one another. I mean, it was a good fight. That was a good fight. We ain't seen a fight like that a long time in Zeus. Because the security waited a good 5, 10 seconds before they stepped in. But they was blowing blow for blow to each other's head. Baby, I was beat that hoe, Roly. Fuck that hoe up, Roly. I was cheering Roly on to stomp her ass. Do you hear me? I was weak as fuck. Roly called her a dirty ass, pissy, pussy ass bitch. <laughs> Not the dirty, pissy, pussy now. She said, you dirty, pissy, pussy ass bitch. And all E.T. could say was, God love me. Does he? Because I beg to differ. Because look at the situation you're in, E.T. Like, does he really love you? That sounded so wrong. I'm sorry, y'all. I shouldn't have said that. But, I mean, that just sounded stupid. God loves me. That's your comeback, really? 
And I agree with Roly. Roly told her, you're never going to make it out. I agree with her. E.T. has still got that mindset. You know, she's still got that broke mindset. She'll never make it out because she has this victim mentality. E.T. has this mentality that she was supposed to be given everything. She's supposed to be carried. You know, all these girls are supposed to be loyal to her, lick her ass, yada, yada. She, like, sis, I agree with Roly. You're never going to make it out. If you don't change that attitude and change the way you move. Um, I mean, E.T. fumbled the bag so hard, y'all. She fumbled the bag so hard. You showed up to fight for $5,000 when you could have been on the show for 50000 You played your cards right or wrong, sis. Like, literally, just like I told y'all a second ago, fans were begging for this girl. Begging for this girl to be on the show. I saw it. That's not speculation. I remember going to one of Zeus Network's posts when they said, who do you want to see on Baddies East? And every damn near comment had E.T. tagged. Like the fans were begging for her to be on this show. She went from there, got the chance to be on the show, and, and fumbled the bag. She played the game wrong. Now, Biggie's one that I don't care for, but Biggie is one that's played the game right. She auditioned. She's three seasons in. Biggie's probably making big bank. Okay? Big bank. Big Dominican bank. I'm going to give it to her. I don't like Biggie, but she's played this game smart. Um, Roly told her. Roly was eating her up. Roly was eating her up. Roly told her, now you're going home broke. Now you're going home with nothing. And E.T. said, I'm booked and busy. Baby, you might be booking a few clubs here and there for a thousand, two thousand dollars a night for an appearance. You know, you might be booking that, and I'm I'm proud for you, Et, and I hope you get a lot more bookings. I really do, because I don't ever want to see anybody struggle. But I guarantee y'all, like like bookmark this video. We can come back to it. I guarantee you guys that nobody's gonna be checking for Et in a year. Nobody's gonna be checking for Et. In a, I mean, I. I give it to the end of the year, actually. This is probably her last appearance on a show. Like, nobody's going to be checking for her. I hope you save that money, sis. I hope, like, And I hope somebody gives her a chance. I hope she gets to be back on TV. I really do. But I think you're going to be in, you're going to end up back at the IHOP. That's the way it's looking. Now, let's talk about this dinner at the end of the episode. What the hell they got going on with this dinner? Looking like the Last Supper, bitch. Y'all see that ta that long-ass table they had? Like, damn. Looked like the last motherfucking supper. Um. Now, Natalie tells all the girls. They're all sitting there. The replacements, everybody. And Natalie tells the replacements that they're finally moving in the house. Um, Which I feel like is stupid. I, originally, when I'm watching this, I'm like... The replacements should have already been in the house, right? By the end of the episode, I changed my mind. Because the replacements were doing the absolute most. Like, what are y'all doing, right? What are y'all doing? We're about to get into that. Natalie says, Asian doll now has a baddie chain. I thought she had a baddie chain weeks ago. I don't know, but apparently they bring up Asian doll and her baddie chain. Now, of course... Here go Hater Pork Chop. Hater Pork Chop can't stand to see anybody else get some shine. She over here. And and, and what's it take to get a baddie chain? What I got what I gotta do to get a baddie chain? And it's like, girl, is it that important to you, Pork Chop? Do you need validation that bad, Pork Chop? Do you? Cause you won't let go of the baddie chain. You in that storm wig. Now, don't get me wrong. The question is valid, right? It's just who it's coming from. The question is valid. What does it take? What does it require to get a baddie chain? It does look like Natalie has favoritism. What did Asian Doll do? She literally touched down and did nothing and you gave her a chain. Is it because she's a celebrity guest? I mean, the question is valid. It's just I don't like it coming from Pork Chop because she gives hater vibes. She gives hater energy. She wasn't even happy for her own sister getting a chain that's why i don't think it's her real sister um and hell them chains probably turn your motherfucking neck green anyway okay i wouldn't want one no damn way who gives a fuck 
we hear Gretchen say it's her last night there. I'm like, Jayla, why the fuck do you have to announce it? We don't give a fuck. She says that her, uh, Gretchen says her elbow hurts really bad. Like, like, girl, what? Go to the fucking clinic down the road here in the DR and take a Percocet and call it a day. I feel like it's another reason why she's going home. I don't feel like it's her elbow. I'm like, Jayla, Jayla got a fucking whole bit in her chest. She's still there. And she didn't have to announce it to everybody. Like, I, like, and we, like, bye. We didn't want you there. No way, Gretchen. The, the girls didn't like you. The fans don't like you. Sayonara, ho. Um, and I thought Gretchen made it to the very end. Because somebody said at the beginning of Baddies Caribbean that Gretchen makes it to the very end. I'm, so, I'm just shocked that she's actually going to leave after all that she's been through. You've made it thus far. Why are you leaving now? Now, we see food come out on plates. I'm shocked. I'm like, wait a minute. They get to eat? Zeus must have seen our comments in the past where we be talking about how them girls don't get to eat. Because they made sure they ate this episode. Um, Now, here's where I was talking about where I agree with Anna Mac. Okay. Aside from Anna Mac apologizing to the other girls and her showing growth, Nunu, out of nowhere, decides to bring up Anna Mac and Mariah's situation at the table and how she didn't like it and how if that was her mama, she would have stomped somebody's ass right then and there. And I'm just like, wait, what? What does what what do you have to do with any of this, Nunu? What are you what are you doing? You look stupid. Sit down, sis. Like, not, like, I'm like, oh, my God, I'm on, on a Mac side. Like, and it also looks crazy, too, because on a Mac's like 21, 22, 23. And here you got Nunu over here, a mother to a 16-year-old. Nunu's probably almost 40. And you over here beefing with this little young thing for no reason. Like, I get it if on a Mac gave her a reason to beef with her. The age thing would be out the door. But it's giving Nunu that you're just looking for a storyline. You're looking for a moment. You're looking to be recognized. And it's at the expense of Automac. Now, Nunu says that she lost her mom a few years ago. And that's why it's sensitive to her. And I get that. But nobody came after your mom. They, they, like This has nothing to do with you. And, and here's another thing. If... Mariah and Anna Mac's situation was still fresh. I could understand her giving her two cents, but they've moved on, baby. Anna and Mariah have moved on. What are you talking about? Why are you speaking up? They have moved on. Like, she literally, this woman has a whole 16 year old child. Could y'all imagine? Could y'all imagine you sitting at home, your 16 year old self, watching baddies, and your mama is on there? I would disown my mother. I would be so embarrassed. Could you imagine going to school? Is Nunu your mama on baddies? Okay. After Nunu does the most, the next replacement, Big Kiva, starts doing the most. And I'm like, y'all, why are y'all doing the most? Natalie said you get to come into the house. You don't have to do all this extra shit now to get noticed. You got to come in the house. Big Kiva brings up that she feels like Taseki and Scotty turned on her. And I'm like, y'all know I don't like Latifah, but I'm on Latifah's side. Latifah is Taseki, for those that don't know. That's her government name. Because somebody asked me who Latifah was last week. Latifah is Taseki. That's her government name. But I'm, I'm on her side this time. Like, what are you talking about, Kiva? What are you talking about? You feel like I turned on you. I don't know you. This is weird as fuck. Like, y'all made it in the house. You don't have to turn up to stay. Then, it's like one by one, they all were going. After Nunu, went Kiva. After Kiva, here go Jelly Bean. I don't even know what Jelly Bean said. She said some dumb shit, too. And then, as she's talking and saying dumb shit, we hear Callie say, um... Tell, we, hold, we hear Callie tell her to shut the fuck up. Now, I thought that was rude. I'm like, Callie, what's your beef with Jelly Bean? That was rude. Now, I know the girl was saying stupid shit, but I don't think she should have been told to shut the fuck up. I do feel like they bully Jelly Bean because they know Jelly Bean can't fight. They know Jelly Bean don't say much. I don't even get why Jelly Bean's there. 
She's a poor casting choice. I mean, eh. And what was she wearing? Jelly Bean, what were you wearing, sis? Wait, what were you And then she got on these sparkly sunglasses inside for dinner. Take y'all sunglasses off. Now, look, I've worn sunglasses in before, and I get it. Like, if you're really high, like, if you're really stoned, or, like, if I want to peep the room out and I don't want to look nobody in their eye, I might wear some sunglasses in. But never at night. I don't ever really wear sunglasses at night. I don't know. But... All hell breaks loose between Callie and Jelly Bean. Look like they're getting ready to fight. The episode ends. We see that next week. How Callie and Jayla end up fighting? Oh, well, Callie and Jayla have had a little bit of secret animosity. They've had some issues bubbling for a few episodes now. So it was about time for that to take its head. Uh, we see Tinkabella next week. Tinkabella and Pork Chops relationship finally also comes to a head as well. That relationship starts to crumble. Uh, Stevie Wonder could have saw that one coming. With a hating ass sister like Pork Chop, who needs enemies, right? We saw that. We saw that coming. Uh, I mean, next week turns into a brawl. Everybody's fighting. Everybody, welcome to baddies. Everybody whooping everybody, right? So we're gonna see that play out. Hopefully. Next week's episode is a lot better than this week's was. Um, let me know what you guys think. And let me know whose side you're on. When it comes to this week, get in the comment section below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and like this video. That helps me get into the algorithm. And if you want to donate to the Damien After Dark movement, in the description box below will be some ways that you can donate. Okay? Thank you guys so much for supporting me. I mean it from the bottom of my heart. I don't take you for granted. I love you from the bottom of my heart, and we will see you next time on Damien After Dark. Okay, don't forget as well if you if you're if you watch now that's TV, Young and Reckless uh, recaps are coming as well. So make sure you go check that out. Love y'all so much. See ya.